I'm Patrick Bailey with IEQLIS. Today is June 11th, 2022, and in this video I'm going to talk about 3D printed name tags. Okay, name tags. Uh, recently, it's actually on, it's still ongoing right now, I think it closes today, uh, Prusa put out a name tag competition, which I was hoping not to take part in. I don't know if I said that before, but my plan was just to find someone who did a, co a cool idea and just copy it because I have a homeschool conference coming up, and I thought, hey, let's make some cool 3D printed name tags. But I didn't see anything I liked, so I started fiddling with some stuff. And so there's some stuff, I put all of this out there. Well, I put all of it out there. So there's some simple ones I put out there, all done in OpenSCAD, which you kind of need because you want to switch some names about around, right? So here's just a simple one out there, really thin. We'll talk about some of these numbers later. Uh, but the idea, if you're, this one might be practical if you're printing, oh man. I don't know, it's one of those things. If you have a conference with hundreds of people, even this one is going to take 20 minutes to print. So I don't know if that's really practical to make hundreds of them, but it's kind of cool at the same time. But if you're only, I think the idea more is you only print three or four or five for your team, and you could do some cool stuff. So here's one I just stuck Nefertiti on, which is pretty simple, but I think a cooler thing, if there were some Egyptologists at some conference, they could do something like this. And I think there are ways you can phonetically spell your name in Egyptian. I don't know how to do that. But this is something you could probably, someone like that could tweak and do probably a pretty cool lanyard. Uh, but some of the, oh, and we also have, of course, a Benchy, but he's actually 3D. He's coming out just a little bit. Oh, that shows up pretty well. But that one was a cool one. I like that one. Um, or I like this one too, a little lanyard here. So I think that might be a good one. You could print a bunch of those out. But some of the ones, but we're 3D, let's go 3D. So one of the ones I'm, I'm most happy about is I have some, um, well, I made a Jurassic Park one here with themed one with a little 3D with the T-Rex. But once I started going 3D, I'd imagine that once you put, a, put this on a lanyard, it's going to just do that and not work very well. It's going to, you know, bend over because it's, it's, it's you know, top heavy. top heavy. There you go. So thought, I saw some other people doing this, and I thought, hey, let's put some magnets in there. So I thickened that, stuck one of the magnets I'm always sticking in, one of these big guys. Um, and then I will show you what I've done. So this is already out there. So here I put three holes so you could put it in different spots. But basically, you've got a big old bolt. You stick it through there. I kind of need a little spacer because there's some space back here. Um, but I actually put a, a thread on the back of this guy. I haven't done that in the past. So that's new. In fact, I'm kind of uh, gonna I'm gonna put that out here shortly. Where um, put a bigger dinosaur out there with a threaded back. But here you can tighten that. I think this is a what are you? Seven eight millimeter eight millimeter. That's the size I made it. If I can get that tight. Of course, be careful. These are really small threads. They're not very strong, so you could strip it really easily. And in fact, the way I have it set up right now, he's attached, but he moves. If you wanted him not to move, uh, you might need to shorten up, might need to lengthen that space a little bit so you can actually get a better bite on it, maybe. And that can be done in a slicer. But also, his jaw comes off. So put his jaw on. Then the idea is. You take a magnet like this. You don't want to do a strip tease here or anything. But then you get it up in behind your shirt, and boom. And I think that holds pretty good. So this is what I'm going to wear at the homeschool conference. I got this little thing. I think it'll I think it'll attract attention. But then my daughter is going to be there with me. So I made an angel one. And the same idea, kind of, because, you know, this is 3D and kind of heavy. If you didn't do that, it's going to fall off. Um, I did make a thinner one for a lanyard, and this one's probably balanced pretty well, that if you use something like this, it would probably hold just okay on a lanyard, I bet. But I like, you know, I think probably the best idea, if you're going to make a lot of these, you're probably not going to make a lot. You're probably going to make a couple for your team, and you might, that's gonna, you might as well make it 3D. If you're 3D printing, make it really 3D. And I think the best way probably to wear it is to stick some magnets on. I think that works the best. Um, boom. Oh, I even made one of these. So 
should probably put that one on. So I like, I like that one a lot. Using the open hardware symbol kind of modeled with the additions that are kind of modeled after Prusa's own tattoo. Although I, I, I tweaked it a little bit, but I think I like that one a lot too. I might switch out between the two, right? So anyway, there's all that fun stuff. And we'll go over the numbers on a couple of them because there's just too many little ones out there. But um, yeah, let's go with the numbers. Okay, let's show some URLs, then we'll get right into the details. So first of all, uh, for the angel wings, luckily uh, this user on printables, NC Sandor, put out these angel wings with the intention that other people would grab them and use them for other things. And I have a few times, and they're really cool. They're very, I might be using the wrong word, gothic kind of a thing, look, and they're, they're pretty cool. So there's that out there. Uh, here's the angel wings I made with a magnet. I also made one without a magnet. Uh, you can look that up, but this one is the one we're talking about now. And I also made this one I'm wearing right now, the uh, T-Rex with the magnet inside. And then also, these are the magnets I'm using. So I'll put a link in the show notes for here. It happens to be an affiliate link where I make all that money. Well, not really, but I make a little bit of money. Uh, and that's the magnet I use. I like the real strong magnet. You need two, one on the inside and then one on the back of the shirt to hold it in. Uh, with that, let's go over the numbers that I have. So the Kindle name tag uh, takes two hours and 34 minutes to print. It takes 1.7 central electricity, and it weighs 0 0.038 kilograms with the magnet inside. But that magnet weighs about 0 .2, 0 0.02 kilograms, so you take that off, it ends up being 0 0.018 central material. So it comes up to 36 central material, not much at all. Uh, but you have to add the magnet back in. In fact, you've got to add the magnet in the inside and the outside. And unfortunately, inflation's hitting us, so the magnet's about 270 a piece. So with both magnets, the magnets are coming up about $5.40 a piece. So all in for this guy, $5.78. Let's just, let's just call it six bucks. So six bucks for a name tag um, is not something you're gonna probably pass out at a conference to a thousand people, but for yourself, it's kind of a cool thing to do and well worth it, I think. Obviously, because I made them. Uh, then with that, the dinosaur one, which I have two pieces. There's this and there's the dinosaur. In fact, I printed two dinosaurs for this guy. Uh, the name tag itself takes 2 hours and 29 minutes to print. It takes 1.2 central electricity, and it weighs 0 0.032 kilograms, minus the, the magnet, which comes out to 0 0.012 kilograms. And at $20 per kilogram comes out to 0.24 cents. But then you add back in the price of the magnet, you need 2, $5.40. Total comes out to $5.66 to print that whole thing out. But then we've got the little dinosaurs, so that's without the little 3D dinosaurs on the outside. Uh, each dinosaur, and I got two, uh, each, uh, di one dinosaur will take one hour and 37 minutes to print. It takes 1.7 cents of electricity, and it weighs 0 0.01 kilograms, which comes out to 20 cents uh, to print out one of the dinos. So that comes out to 22 cents in total, and I've got two of them. Uh, but with one dinosaur, total c price comes out to about 5.88. You throw in the second dinosaur, we're talking roughly six bucks, a little bit over actually. So about six bucks to print both of these, where 80, 90% of the price is just the magnets themselves, but you yeah, know, magnets are expensive, but they're pretty cool. Uh, and these are really strong because, you know, with, if you're going to have something three dimensional here uh, and, and sticking out, it's going to lean over unless you have something really strong holding it back. And I think the magnets are your best bet. Uh, with that, we'll go over some more of the details we have here. Uh, number one, on both of these, if you're going to do this, of course, we're putting in change, um, change layers. So, uh, a couple of things. You know, I'm putting colors on here just because I like the convenience. Uh, visualize it a little bit better before it prints. But you can go in here and say, let's say we want to reverse it and make a, a dark one. So we'll go white on the bottom. And then we'll go, uh, well, let me, let me choose another color because I end up losing it. I'll choose a random color. Okay. So what we have here on the top, that was not very random. Okay, there we go. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll go down to where we want to change that at right there, 5.15. So you can right click on that, edit the color, make it whatever you want. We'll make it uh, black. We'll make it, you know, pure black, you kind of lose the color in the visual here. So I just do 48, 48, 48, and that kind of gives me near black where I can actually still see some of the shadows in there. And then we'll go down to the bottom and we'll make it. We'll make it white. So we'll just kind of reverse this. Boom. And there you go. So now you got some black wings. That has, that has a good look to it, too. Another thing you need to do on either one of these is at 4.25, that layer height, you need to put in <coughs> a 
a pause. So here we just have a pause right there. That allows us to put the magnet in. Hmm. <coughs> now the pause, it may seem counterintuitive because here's an opening here and I'm and I'm pausing it on the layer where it closes over, but when you're pausing, you're pausing at the beginning of that layer. So this is the last layer, so I'll get the whole layer done, stop, put the magnet in, and then it starts this layer. So that's important key points. Okay, there's that. Now, the OpenSCAD, which is out there, that's the important thing, because I doubt many people are named Patrick Bailey or named Kendall. So if you want to change this, you need to go grab the OpenSCAD and tweak it, in which case it's pretty easy. So you can go down here, there's the name one, and you can change it to something else. So uh, we'll change it to, how about Joseph Prusa, right? Because he's doing all this cool stuff. Now if I do that, it'll stick it in there at center, but you can see uh, it's not gonna fit. So I'll have to do one of two things. I'll have to change the font size. Well, actually one of three things. So we'll, we'll, in this case, we'll kind of do all. So we can change the font size, make it real small. But you can see that kind of moved it around. So I can actually go down here where I have the name, boom. So there's the name right there that's going in and I can say, you know what, rather than negative two, we'll uh, add four to, four to that and we will drop it down 10 and that kind of moves it around. So you can go down here and do what you need to to move it around. I'm gonna undo that because I don't want to mess up my code. Uh, another thing you could do, um, aside from doing that, you could change uh, which font you're using. In fact, you might not have the font I'm using. I, I hope you do, but if you don't, what you can do is you can kind of we'll comment that out, and you can go up here to the font list, and these are all your fonts. So you can just, uh, unfortunately, it won't show you what they look like, so you might want to open a Word document or something and see if you can find something you like. But I'll just randomly click on this one, say copy a clipboard, hit OK, hit Paste, make sure to put that semicolon back. And now we're going to use whatever this is. Oh, there you go, a little fancy. Um, now another thing you could do, another last choice, is I'll bring this back to where it's big. Boom. What did I do? Oh, I forgot the semicolon. Okay, so he's too big. Uh, one thing I could do is I could change the size of these wings, which is a little bit of a pain. Uh, but it's possible. So here we have this back, we have the width, height, and depth, and the width is right there. So normally I'm 77, so I'll just put a note there for myself, but I can make it 120. And I'll come back here and see now, now I'm probably wide enough for that, but the angel wings aren't where they need to be. So I'll have to adjust the X and the Y, so we'll say minus 20 and plus 20. Boom, there you go. There's another way. So there you go. Now I've got Joseph Proust and he fits on there just fine. Um, but it's probably going to be pretty big, so you might want to adjust some other things. Or you could do two lines. There's, there's some things you should do in the open SCAD. Uh, and a similar thing, I'll bring in the uh, this guy. And I, oh, I need to put a link to this. If you don't, if I didn't put a link, well, there's a link on, um, I'm using Jurassic Park font which is not something you probably have. Uh, and I have a link on the actual thing on printable, so you wanna go download that and utilize that because here I have Jurassic Park font because it's a dinosaur, you want Jurassic Park font, right? But if we we're gonna do, in this case, I, I did first and last name as two different things, so I'll do, I'll do Joseph Prusa because the printables is going on. Oh, and he just kind of fits just fine, okay. But if you were something super long, you might wanna think how you're gonna adjust it. Uh, yeah, are you going to make that smaller? Or are you going to make that bigger? But in this case, if I want Prusa to be this, the same size, I can go down here. This is the first name. That's the second name. I'm, I'm using the same font size, but I could come in here and say I'll make that one a 10 and make that smaller. And that fits, but also you make it too small, uh, it's not going to work very well on the details. So when you're trying to print a 0.4, you might want to swap out a nozzle for a 0.25 if you need a lot of details, which would make it take a lot longer to print. Uh, but anyway, that's the uh, simple go-to for that uh, on how to adjust things. Let me undo my changes, bring myself back, boom. There you go, so uh, name tags, lots of fun name tags. Um, I think I mentioned at the beginning of this that name tags 
you know, are probably not going to be something practical that you could just make a ton of for a conference or something. You know, some smaller ones, non-magnetic -magnet, ones, you could probably, you know, do a couple hundred, I think, reasonably, uh, as long as you script it out. And I'm probably going to do a video on scripting it out at, at some point on how, do you, how to get it all done quickly with a bunch of different names. But more to come on that. But beyond that, you know, I'm not going to, it's going to be very strange to, you know, print a bunch of it, six bucks a pop for, like the conference I'm going to here, uh, the homeschool conference, I think they have 1,400 families and about 5,000 people showing up. You're not going to make 5,000 of these uh, with the magnets. It's just, you imagine what, even a thousand, you're talking 6,000 bucks, not counting labor and time and effort. That's just, just materials alone. So no way. Um, but if you're running a booth like I am, and you only have a few people, you could probably stand out. And I hope this is going to stand out as something unique and interesting and um, gets attention. And if you're running a booth, you want to get attention, right? So uh, for low low yield, I think it's got its place. So anyway, I had a lot of fun doing this. I didn't think I was going to do this because I was hoping someone else would make some stuff I liked. But um, these... Um, uh, these challenges that uh, they do on printables every so often, in fact, they do a lot of them, are interesting. They can kind of uh, spur the imagination, get you going. So if you haven't done one, you might want to go look into one. There's, there's probably no way anyone's going to sit there and do every single one of them. There's so many. Or things that you're not interested in. Like I think they're doing something about flower pots right now. It's not something I'm, I'm in, into right now. But um, definitely interesting to see what other people are doing and definitely interesting to challenge uh, the more you do this kind of stuff, the better you get at it. So it's having some of those challenges before you can improve your skills. And I think I improved my skills by doing this. So I had fun. And here they are. Go check them out if you need something like that. Uh, Open SCAD should be out there. So they're there for everyone to enjoy. So with all that, let's wrap this up with a reminder that 3D printing is an engineering adventure that you're on. You can develop your skills and your knowledge. You can take this in so many ways. You can make a business out of this. You can teach others. And you can make some amazing designs. So design it engineer it. I wish I had more time or more printers. I have so missed so many cool things for this, this homeschool conference compared to the years past. The 3D printing designs out there are far better as a whole than they were in years past. People have upped their game. I think we'll be better I think I will be better prepared for the next conference. Once this one is done I will start mass printing the stuff I give away like the compliant grabbers. For this homeschool conference, at the moment, I only have 25 to give away, and hopefully I can up that to about 100 the next few days. But next year, I'm hoping to give at least 1,000 of them away. So we'll see. We'll see.